Okay, so we're going to move on to modern photography. If there was a section that I wish we could spend more time on, it would be modern photography. I feel like photography is a um, really important medium that sort of gets discounted whenever we talk about modern art. Um, photography has its own history to it. It has its own major timeline. Um, and so I would tell you that this is sort of just a tip of the iceberg. Um, if you're interested in photography, I encourage you to do further research um, in this area. All right, so when we talk about modern photography, we really talk about the two people that spent their lifetime So when we talk about photography, we talk about um, Stieglitz and Weston. Stieglitz spent um, his life really trying to get photography uh, recognized as a medium, and then Weston sort of cements that even further. So Alfred Stieglitz um, studied in Berlin, and in 1890 he begins uh, photography work in the New York City street scene. He was part of a group called the Photo Succession, and it was formed in 1902. Three years later, he opens the Gallery 291 and the publisher of the photographic journal's camera notes and camera work. He spends his life trying to get photography validated as an art form. He was married to Georgia O'Keeffe. He was born in New Jersey, and his parents were wealthy German immigrants. Gallery 291 um, is a gallery that Stieglitz started. He opened it um, with a showing of this photograph here called the Steerage. He founds a photo succession group which curates traveling photo shows across the country and he believed in raw images for viewer viewers to um, relive events as he saw them. And so his style was more photojournalistic than anything else. Of course, we talk about photojournalist styles of Dorothea Lang. Um, we talk about the photojournalist um, styles of the American regionalism and the Farms Work Administration. Um, but that was something that was going on more in the Midwest. Stieglitz is the one who establishes photography in New York City. That's important because New York City is the main hub of where people go to buy art. And so he shows social issues that happen in New York, including um, mass immigration into New York City's harbor. Um, he focuses on formal elements of photography and design principles in his compositions. Um, you can see the rule of thirds being used here in the steerage um, pretty prominently. This particular work became a benchmark for modern photography. Um, the steerage is considered Stieglitz's signature work and was proclaimed by the artist and illustrated in history as the first modernist photo photograph. It marks Stieglitz's transition away from painterly prints and symbolist subjects to a more straightforward depiction of life. Um, it began its life as a masterpiece uh, four years after it was created and after the publication of the photograph in an issue of camera work, um, which was a photography magazine that um, premiered important photography, but also um, cubism. Stieglitz loved to recount how the great painter had praised the college-like dispersal of forms and shifting depths of the steerage. Um, it was canonized retroactively. The photograph allowed Stieglitz to put his chosen media um, on par with the experimentations of Europe's painting scene. 
um, Europe's sculpture scene, Europe's fine art scene. So um, Kandinsky and Picasso stayed in Europe. They did not come to the United States um, and establish in New York City. Instead, um, they stay in Europe and Stieglitz Stieglitz's publication of this magazine allows him to elevate photography to the fine art ideas that the new avant-garde artists had. In 1915, he lavishly reprints the image in a large-scale photogre on both vellum and Japanese paper for inclusion in his last magazine. Um... Studio 291 is one of the three that Stieglitz ran. Um, it was located at 291 Fifth Avenue in New York City, and it featured early modernist works of European artists. All those European artists that came to New York seeking, um, seeking asylum from the war, seeking safety from the war in Europe. Uh, establish in New York City under Stieglitz Gallery. So when we look at the art scene, we look at these giants in terms of um, in terms of art. We think of Picasso, we think of Gisto, we think of Matisse and Rodin and Rousseau. Um, and we think of them in the context of Europe. But what Stieglitz has done is sort of bridged New York with Europe and created a tie. And because he does this, photography becomes a legitimate art form. Stieglitz said, it is not in the personalized sense about which I care, but that which is created sacredly as a result of a deep inner experience with all of oneself and that becomes art in time. In 1883, Stieglitz was 19 years old and he begins taking his first pictures while he attends art school in Berlin. Um, he was asked to give the MoMA in New York some of his photographs uh, in 1923. This was significant because it was the first time that a major American museum included photographs as part of its collection. Um, the MoMA still has an excellent art collection. In fact, that's where Dorothea Lange's migrant worker is. So if you're really into photography, I highly recommend the MoMA. Um, if you ever get a chance to go there and see their collection, spend some time in photography. It's really a phenomenal place. Um, Stieglitz and O'Keeffe placed most of his original photographs in major U.S. museums, including the National Portrait Gallery, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the Philadelphia Museum of Art. He was best known for fighting the rec for the recognition of photography as a valid form. Um, his most popular images were the steerage and the flat iron. This is an image of the flat iron building. He was born to an upper middle class family. Um, he vacationed in the Adirondacks and went to private school. His parents were German Jewish immigrants and he attended private Christian school in New York. His dad was a lieutenant in the army and he had five siblings, two of which were twins that he admired for their intimate connection with one another. His photography had a deep connection to people and their personality and he set standards in the world of portraiture. He was married to Georgia O'Keeffe This is an image that Stieglitz took of O'Keeffe. Um, while some of his images aren't famous for their um, fashion photography or his portraiture, we find that many of the poses that we naturally use in portrait photography are ones that he pioneered. Here's an image that he took for an advertisement. This is Edward Weston. In 1923, Weston moves to Mexico City, 
um, where he opens a photography studio with his apprentice and lover, Tina Modotti. Uh, many important portraits and nudes were taken during his time in Mexico. And it was here that the famous artist Diego Rivera hailed Weston as a master of 20th century art. In 1926, he begins his work um, that he's really most famous for. They are natural forms that are close-ups, um, nudes, and landscapes. I always say when I tell my students about Weston that Weston was the only photographer that could ever make a pepper look sexy. Um, he makes a series of monumental close-ups, seashells, peppers, halved cabbages, and those photographs are very much about texture. For example, this architectural image of a shell is one that is very much about the different textures of the shell. You see the opalescent texture at the very top that curves forward in space. You see the one that's rougher that comes at you and recedes into space so you understand the way the shell moves in the light. This is his pepper from the vegetable series that he did. Um, you can see that he captures the texture of the pepper expertly and that um, he uses light as a way to highlight the organicness of the pepper. You get this um, backlighting that happens at the top and the shiny surfaces. And then you understand how the pepper recedes in space based on the um, dramatic. He also does a series of succulents. They are images of cactus, mostly. Um, he does close-up images of them like this. I think this is probably where um, I fell in love with photography the most, in that uh, you can get these really beautiful dramatic angles and um, sort of macro expressive um, images that are striking um, that a lot of times we don't notice as being such. You know, it's just a cactus. Like, if you were walking along the desert floor, you'd probably just brush right by that. Um, but Weston has this eye for the architectural photography that he does. Um, and by making something large, that we generally see as an ordinary part of life by making it the main focal point and the main um, center of the photograph. He sort of brings out the beauty in the world around us that we take for granted. Very much these images are about texture. Um, he moves to California and he shoots um, a lot of the California landscape at that point. He also becomes one of the founding members of a group called F64. Um, he was in F64 with Ansel Adams. Um, the group chooses the name F64 because it's a term that they, well, I guess it's the setting that they use to set their aperture at for um, sharpness in both the foreground and distance of their photographs. In the mid thirties, he um, starts a series of sand dunes in California, which are often considered some of his um, best work. He becomes the first photographer to receive a Guggenheim Fellowship for experimental work in 1936. Um, after he wins the fellowship, he spends the next year, two years taking photographs in the West and Southwest. Um, he had an assistant, her name was Charisse Wilson, and he eventually marries her. And in 1941, he uses the photography that he shot in the East and South um, to provide illustrations for Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Um, he ends up with Parkinson's disease. He was diagnosed in the late 40s 
And at that time, he shoots his last pictures in Point Lobos. Um, in the late 40s, the MoMA features a retrospective of his work. And over the next 10 years, um, his work progressively um, takes hold as his illness gets worse. He supervises the printing, um, or he supervises his son's uh, photography, who are Brett and Cole. And um, he did a 50th anniversary retrospective that was published in 1952 with photographs that were printed by his son. Here's images of the um, sand dunes that he took in the Southwest and um, that were featured in Walt Whitman's The um, Leaves of Grass. In the late 50s, there was a show, um, there was a series of eight to 10 prints that were shown at the Smithsonian Institution called The World of, Esther, of Edward Weston, um, which paid tribute to his remarkable accomplishment in American photography. Um, he died January 1st of 1958 in his home in Wildcat Hill, Carmel, California. Um, his ashes were scattered in the Pacific Ocean at Pebbly Point Beach in Point Lobos.